Hi guys, and this evening I thought I would do a little bit of Photoshop. Um, I was actually been looking for some photos of a friend that I she wants to do something for Christmas. Um, so I found found those images for her that I had um, backed up. And uh, while I was there, I stumbled across these. So I was bored one day, weather was rubbish, and I thought, I oh, know, let's mess around trying to do something a bit creative. So it's two glasses that are basically chucking wine everywhere um, but it creates a, a heart shape originally they were both red but I added a little bit of a twist to it I thought I'll make one blue and one red a bit of white a bit of white background so red white and blue um, and you know it's quite effective I think you could just leave it all red you could just change the colours to whatever you want it's, it's no real drama um, it's relatively simple to do um, I'm going to try and do this as best I can sort of as as I go um, but I did do it a couple of years ago, so it may look it may look very slightly differently because I 100% can't remember what I did fully. But um, anyway, so let's get rid of that that picture anyway. Which was the back? Let's just get rid of it. Um, I've done a little bit here. I've just basically blanked off a few bits. You've got me holding the glass there. So I used a, my remote control for the camera, and I filled the glass up with liquid. It wasn't wine. It was uh, uh, like Ribena or whatever, squash or whatever. Um, so basically, you just you, you sort of toss the wine, push the button, boom. Hopefully, you get what you want. I must have taken around about a hundred shots, I think, to get the ones I wanted. And the two that I'm using, which is that one, um, that's you'll see in a while reason why I need that to, to actually get the base of the glass in, and this one. So I did it. But all you know, all the same side. So all from the right hand side. All I've done there is just flip that shot. So what we're going to do is drag it down out the way and, and drag it onto this one. And get rid of it. Don't need that one at all. So at the moment we've got two layers side by side. There's going to be many people out there saying you're doing it wrong, um, but this is the way I kind of know. So at the moment, obviously, I've just made it transparent so we can see what we might get. Um, if it's sort of set about there, it's probably about right. But as you can see, the heart shape itself doesn't really exist. So I had to manipulate it into the shape a little bit just to get, get what I wanted, which we can do a bit later. Um, but at the moment, what I'm going to do is just bring it up, and we're just going to rub through. So I've got it in roughly the right position. I'm just going to rub through, get rid of, um, get rid of me, What's left of me anyway. I'm using the eraser tool there, so I'm just rubbing through that top layer to find what we do. So what we do is as we rub through this one here, you'll see my hand appear on that one, and you'll see the glass here as well. So I've just made it small now, so you can actually see. Here, we go, here it comes. It's coming through. Like I say, there's going to be other ways to do this. With Photoshop, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. It just depends on how quick you can get something done. I mean, this is just an experiment, so um, you know, it's just it works um, works for me that way. So anyway, so that's that's basically showing through now. I think I'll be careful with that bit there. So what I'm going to do is just drag it that way. You can see that's going to show through later. Um, let's just get rid of. More of my and what we are, 72, 42, um, so just up the yeah, what we can do now is just get rid of the bases of the glass up to about where my hand is because we're going to replace that with the stem of the glass later anyway. So as long as we leave some of the glass there, we can match up that stem with it'll be fine. Same as this one here, which goes the other layer, and get rid of that. So, what we end up with then, like I said, was basically two bits of the glass. So, we get rid of myself completely, so we can, we can just rub straight through that. Um, anyway, so we'll just get rid of it. Nice white paint, paintbrush, just get rid of it completely. There we go. So, that is the pretty much basic, the basic image. What I'm going to do is just double check the auto levels on each each glass, which has darkened down the red on that one. And 
the same on this one. Not a lot, but anyway. So we can move that out of the way just for a minute. So we can see what I've done here. So what we can do is just cancel that back one, cancel that one. So we can actually see here what what's actually reviewable. So we can actually rub away any white bits that we don't want in shots. Just make this a bit more harsh. Uh, I'll just do this very very quickly. So <coughs> excuse me. Um, so you know it's just just an example. Okay, a bit too close now. Um, come back to that in a sec. Um, just highlight it with the highlighting tool. Quick selection tool. And we can just rub away the rest. The crazy thing is we've just got to keep that glass itself around because obviously glass is clear and the white background is there so what we don't want to do is lose that edge of that glass um, as you can see it's very very light anyway I'm surprised Photoshop still hanging on to it there go, so let's hold on to it relatively well and just bring it down here on the colour like so What the, the settings were for the, the camera when I shot it, shot the actual shot itself to kind of capture the uh, what was going on, the movement of the liquid and everything. Um, right, so we're going back to the uh, eraser tool now. I'm just going to rub around, around the glass just gently. And that's that bit. I mean, just get rid of the whole lot around here. Is an easy way, a quick way of doing it. So that, that's that one glass done. So I'll bring that one back in um, and go to there, get rid of this one. Um, I'll deselect that one. So this one here, we're going to do the same sort of thing, just quickly, um, quickly highlight it. Photoshop will do, who knows? Just do the same thing. Just Photoshop seems to have this moment of brilliance sometimes. And you think, oh my god, that was perfect. But then sometimes it does its own complete mad thing and it doesn't want to do what you want it to do. Um, but I suppose it's a computer and we don't argue with it. We just get frustrated sometimes. Right, so that's pretty much. Pretty much there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those droplets as is. And we've gone pretty much around there, just up here. And a little bit there. Like I say, there's probably a much better way of doing this, but I'm just doing it as off the fly. Um, just trying to give you an example of how I, I did it or how I remember doing it. Um, I just got a little bit of the, of the highlight of the glass there, didn't didn't happen. There we go. Um, just a little bit there, a little bit of colour. And then the inverse. Probably could feather it slightly. But anyway, so we're going to rub now rub through the rest of that background. There we go. And the background is white anyway, but it just helps us get rid of I mean it means what we can do now is when we bring the other one back, it means I can move it around a bit and actually rotate it and and stuff easy without having you know anything else so we can move this around now so we can make that that heart shape happen so let's go to that one here so we're going to do the just highlight it with the box like so and then we're going to right click transform and we're going to warp it a little bit so what we're going to do is just add a bit more shape to that bit there So, I'll just like 
So that's actually given a bit of a curve. And get rid of that. So that has now given us more of a, a curvature shape. Okay. So now we can you know, bring in however we want to. So I mean, that's you know, we have that as the yeah. So basically, we're just going to pull. What we're going to do now is pull that edge down. So a different way of doing it, we just go to uh, filter, liquify. It's going to show us that. So what we do is move the uh, the forward warp tool. We just grab hold of that bit and just drag it. Uh, just maybe drag that a bit, like so. And that there, basically, just bring it up a bit more, more curve to it. So it's got a nice sort of half-hearted, half-hearted sort of shape to it now. So we can bring that one over, like so. So there's different ways of doing it. We can, I, I might leave it like that actually, because it's got a bit of a different twist on what it was originally. Um, then we can bring in a white background, which is the, I've left the background white. So that's now showing what it might look like. Um, and what we've got now, so it's just a quick, different way of doing it. I mean, it's like I say, it's probably another way of doing it um, and what I might do is just bring up the so we're going to camera raw tweak and then what I'm going to do is go into the convert grayscale and HSL levels saturation and just grab the reds and just turn the reds up so it's a bit more punchy um, maybe even turn the clarity up a little bit just to give it some give it some punch there and you'll see the difference that one's gone much much darker so we're going to do the same with that one and because I've just done it I can go filter and camera roll at the top and that one's done as well um, there you go so that's actually given us two two shots there the only thing I'd say is this this um, glass here probably just needs a little bit of a, a dodge tool on it just to lighten it up a little bit let's have that in there um, just to make it look a bit cleaner um, so we've got to that point there now what we need to do here is go to the glass glass bit we were we were dealing with earlier and what I'm going to do is just get the lasso tool and I'm just going to go through the glass there around like so and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do layer via copy and I'm going to do a layer via copy again there it is. That's gone. Um, go back to the background then. Do another one. Do another one there. Another copy. So we've got two. Um, and the reason I've done two is because I'm going to flip one. So this one, first one here will be. It just says messing around afterwards. Uh, image. So image and then image rotation. And you go flip horizontally. And that will go to the other side now. And what we do is we pull off this down here, and grab our move tool, and we can grab our bit of wine we had. There we go. What we can do then is we can line it up. At the moment that's not lined up very well, so what we can do is just change it in a minute. Um, so then I can actually go back to this one and go to the other side, get rid of that layer. So I saw the whole thing um, because it's slightly different. Now I've got a different, a slightly different crop or selection, shall I say? And go back. Let's go back one. Let's flip it anyway. So then we can literally that one down. We can literally grab it. Do the opposites. And that will go there in a minute. So let's start with that one there, and we're just going to drop a box around it, and we're going to go free transform again. And we're going to rotate it approximately the approximately there. And actually, it's got a bang on. So it's actually lined up for me. So that's one glass done. So we can just go click, deselect. What we can see there is it's very slightly off, um, but it's actually the base, not the actual glass, we need to worry about. It's more the the base itself, so you can actually see there, it's it's probably about 
there. But what we're going to do now is get the eraser tool again, make it much smaller, right there. and we'll just go through through the glass, just rubbing it through, just so you see the reflection hitting on the bottom of there. And that's the that's the first one. There's a bit of rubbing through to do on the on the background there because that background is very slight to this one, different to this one. So we go to this one now. Layer two. And we're going to do the same sort of thing. See that doesn't really match up. So another box around it. Like so right click, free transform. And what we can do then is just aim it up using a just line of sight really. Put it right. Approximately, and then do that. Deselect, and then we can just rub through the same sort of situation. Like that. Down to there. And we can rub through all this. So, but we go back and do that. Tight, a bit of a tidy up later on. Um, so that is, you know, that is the basic, basic image we've just done, and. You could leave it like that, really. I mean, I've just got to sort the background out a little bit because um, what we've got here is if we go and do the magic eraser tool, it might sort it out quite nicely. Which one? Layer two. There we go. It's actually done it quite nicely. Layer three. Done. Um, so what we can do now is merge layers. So flat, flatten the image, and then basically you can do auto levels. That's fine. Auto color, let's change that background slightly. Let's go back to white, um, and that is the basic, basic sort of uh, the image that I ended up with. It's, you know, I'd say it's very slightly, slightly different. And the easiest way I found to do the the two different colors was to do um, layer, duplicate layer, like so, and then you can go adjustments. And you change the hue and saturation to whatever colour you want. So if we went for the slightly different coloured blue this time, and we go a bit more turquoisey, we can do saturation, we can go crazy. But obviously I'll watch those glasses changing slightly so we can go a little bit of lightness, and obviously sort the background out, whatever. Um, and you're thinking, okay well I've just done both bits. Well you now get your eraser tool back again because I wanted that bit in red and the glass in red or you could just do one glass red with half the heart or, or vice versa you just decide to colour through whichever bit so what I'm going to do here is we'll go through this one here which becomes red so all I'm doing is rubbing through this layer like that to the edge of that glass because it's not 100% I'm just leaving it to sort of merge gently into and then this one here we're just going to rub through Couple of hits there, and round and down, and then through that, like so, and then down and through. Job done. And there we go. So that's that's probably the easiest way of doing that for me anyway. That was, it was quite quick and easy. And all we do then is go layer, and then you can flatten it. But just to show you the difference. So if we get rid of um, background layer one, the copy. See, it's just red. So that's what we've done. Basically, kept that one alive. So, and if you remove that one, it shows you what we've we've basically got on top of that layer. So it's all good. So yeah, to save that, you just go layer, flatten, and you just go right click, save as, um, job done. So compared to what we had originally, which is probably a little bit neater, and I probably did it very slightly differently before. Um, it's it's pretty good. So. Photoshop is actually relatively easy to use if you kind of think about what you're doing a little bit. Um, I've learned over the over the, over many years of just trial and trial and error, um, but just to mess around with with shots like this is quite effective. Um, I mean, you could use that for Valentine's Day or just for a love a love sort of uh, you know kind of thing um, as a, you know a, even a birthday card or something. You could add you know happy birthday. So if you want to add. Um, some writing to the idea, you just do new layer, and keep it without moving the thing, new layer, and put some writing, you could just say you know, happy birthday, and um, get a nice, yeah, nice red. you want 
to do really can you I mean you can just go bigger um, but with the writing you can now obviously go des deselect it I was going to say there you go um, and go layer so right click on layer you go blending options and then you can add in so bevels and edges so there's a sort of bit of depth to it and a slight shadow you can adjust the shadows and, uh, and things like that so it should there you go so you can basically like it's cut out you can add textures you can add stroke to it um, inner shadows which will give you a, a, a deep and sort of uh, it brings it out of the page quite nicely you can obviously mess around with the different levels of the way it shows up um, so I'm going to leave it like that one for a minute um, you, know, you should have it something like that couldn't you um, just crop it slightly. Like that. If that was a birthday card, you could say happy. You know, if it was a fiftieth or something, it, it could work quite well. But if you look at the writing, it's left a nice little shadow and everything around, which looks quite good. Um, so it just brings out the, you know, the meaningfulness of the actual image. So the, when you've created an image, it gives you plenty of things to think about and also what could you use that image for so even though I was just messing around one afternoon when the weather was rubbish outside it's actually giving me an image that I could actually use for probably five or six different things either a birthday card or a Valentine's advert or you know other things like that so you know it's just a case of thinking about um, shots when you've actually done it and completed them so and obviously how you edit them to me I, I preferred it with one one stroke of blue with you know the blue in 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 the same glass, but I thought this time I'll just actually do a bit of a mirrored mirrored version. Just adds a bit more, you know, whatever it is really. So it's almost like it shot out of the out of the glass and jumped to the other one and and, and the other way around. So that works quite well. Um, but say so you could just do it black and white. See, I mean, I don't know whether she looks like black and white. It could still be quite um, quite uh, effective. Um, yeah, it could work quite well. If you start messing around with the actual colour tones in black and white, you could actually make it into something a bit more interesting. So there's many ways of messing around with things to get it a bit more interesting and whatever you need to use it, you know, use it for. So it's it's a case of messing around until you get it right. I know many people do things differently on on Photoshop, and like I say, this is probably not the right way to do it as an as an efficient way of doing it but as to show people how, how I did it quickly I and mean, I did this probably about four or five years ago originally so I probably know more now than I did then especially how to use it and obviously Photoshop has evolved as well so there's lots of things it does better um, like selection tools and, and the way it removes things and the, and the healing brush tool works very well now um, but um, I've also discovered a few new things with the last update of Photoshop CC it's allowing a lot more Sort of uh, small adjustments that it, it's got recognition systems in it now, so it recognises a face, and you can adjust the eyes and the mouth and everything like that. So um, that's enough for another time. Anyway, I hope you found this video slightly interesting and maybe helpful if you want to mess around with Photoshop. Um, like I say, it's not perfect, and it's a case of this is how I've done it. If there's a better way of doing it, obviously, and you know it, use that 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 technique. It's all about your personal, you know. Um, personal choice of how you how you do it do something so um, but there you go anyway so uh, anyway next video will be coming soon